Welcome back to Trek Yards, everybody. I am Captain Full. I am Conference. Today we're talking about the Enterprise E. Is it back? Some could say maybe. It's been a long road getting from Nemesis to here. Ooh, good. Uh, it's been a very long time, Stuart, and, and this is something that we both did not notice because it is a blink and you'll miss it, freeze frame it, zoom and enhance. Mm -hmm. But when you do said things, it's there, Stuart. It's actually there. And then we're going to debate that. But let's just remind ourselves, Stuart, this first picture is, of course, the last time we saw it, in Nemesis 2379. And the next shot, five years later, it is one of these sovereigns getting, um, oh, getting, uh, redded. Yeah, this was one that kind of got, uh, shown to us as we were filming mm -hmm. um, our, review, our review and stuff. So, anyway, um, how do you feel? <clears throat> how do you feel about it being in the battle, first of all? Uh, I kind of rather it wouldn't be, honestly, um, because it's either going to establish why it's not in the card season three because it gets destroyed here, or um, it's time travel. Each things are going to happen, and it's going to be never happened in the first place. But it's it's one of those uh, things of the audience will think it's the Enterprise. Don't include a sovereign class. I wish they'd included ships that definitely weren't the Enterprise. -y. Um, and yeah, you, as you said, blinking, you'll miss it kind of thing. And the one that does come in is the Sovereign. Um, but on my first reaction live, uh, somebody actually pointed out that the Sovereign is there before the Sovereign orbs we'll, in. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit later, Stuart. What about you? I think it's slightly refreshing because normally in media, if the Enterprise comes in, it becomes the look, 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 there it is in the hero of the tale. But in reality... Once Picard left, it might have been given a captain who was good, but not outstanding, and just do general missions. There's no reason that the Enterprise necessarily keep its legacy of, of excellence. I mean, several years of TNG, it was just sort of meandering around. You know, it wasn't necessarily doing flagship-level things for some of those missions, for sure. So the fact that it, it if it's in this battle and is not an active celebrity is kind of nice, that it can it can just do missions, be in the area, pop in to help, and not be this grand standing, look, I'm the Emperor of the Fleet, come support me. You know, no, Janeway and the Star is the one that's been following it. They have, um, you know, fleet priority. And so I, I kind of like it being included and not being highlighted for those sort of reasons. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it would have been kind of cool if it was one of the ones that warped in and maybe took like a one phaser hit to the shields and then went red. And you actually saw like the hero-ness of it, but you don't know who's commanding it or anything. But well, it's just it's just a bit more cheeky because they've got the sovereign first of its class name for the first time, the Enterprise E, the famous one, the Defiant, the real entity, or the Sao Paulo if you want to go there, and the Centaur. So this has some insanely heavy hitters in terms of legacy. I mean, when they go big, you know, we were saying earlier in the seasons, why are they more version ships? Well, they're gonna throw us. Lots of legacy people in one go. But let's look at what the evidence is. Here are t the two shots. And I just want to highlight the fact that the middle shot is the is the bottom shot. And you can see E. I mean, it is getting blown apart. I mean, there's a lot of hull damage. Because each of those this, these ships have no shields. Each phaser bar, phaser bar is going to cause a uh, hull breach. Which is going to cause anyone around the area to blow out into space. That, that Many people in the Enterprise just got killed in that part of the battle. I'm just saying. It's pretty uh, pretty intense. Yeah, I do want to point out the fact that it could be that they just had the model with the registry on it and didn't think anyone would notice, so they didn't bother changing it. But somebody brought that up in my live as well. But I'm, not, I'm like, well, they also have the Sovereign there, and that brought up the whole discussion about uh, it being multiple places. So um, how hard is it to change a registry number? Because we know the other Defiants have no number. On the front, um, on the nose, yes. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of a weird... Thing. So I don't know if it's a rendering error or if it's just laziness <clears throat> or what it is. Well, it's a DS9 trope, which was no registries and no blinkies. No blinkies say render time and no registries because they can't really have every ship customizingly designed. It would be excessive, except those few you see in close-up. And you don't notice until you look like, well, how is that canon that this galaxy has no registry? It's because it's too much work. So yes, they obviously had a model built, converted, given, whatever... And a lot of them say Sovereign. Now, you would think that would mean the registries themselves would be changed to Sovereign. Mm -hmm. And there's n and I went through frame by frame, and there's no evidence of any of these shots with the E also being the Sovereign. So that would be odd. I, I know you'd save yourself 20 minutes, 10 minutes, by not changing the textures to be the E, uh, to be the Sovereign on the nacelle. Mm. But then to fly right by, 
And the thing about the Enterprise is, its register is very easily noticeable because it's it's not as long as other ships. It's extremely specific. It's like it's very recognizable. So I mean, I, t I totally believe it was a mistake. They just didn't change the textures, but it's pretty blatant to these two shots with even with the motion blur. Yeah. And, and it's still there. And I mean, it, it's more canony by being than, you know, the D4 appearing Enterprise being a Katinga. Like, there's no Sovereign slash Enterprise shots. It's all either Enterprise or Sovereign. The other evidence that kind of strongly suggests this is the Enterprise is the fact that it's right beside the Dauntless. And the Dauntless was kind of the leader of this fleet. So it would make sense that the flagship would come in, like, right beside. Because you can see the Dauntless in the background there, right, sitting right beside it. So the two yeah. best ships would uh, sure. take the lead on that. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. yeah. But like it being the battle, you know, who's captain, you know, that's the question. It's not Worf. <laughs> it's not data. Thanks to Picard, etc. It doesn't even anyone for legacy packed, but it's somebody we know. And it does, you know, clearly, I, I don't think Picard season three is going to say the ship was destroyed this early. It's clearly destroyed somewhere along the line make the F, but you know, it being here I think is nice, and it gives us five more years of, of stories between Nemesis and, and here. And just a caveat, for anybody watching this after the fact, we haven't seen the last episode yet, so we don't know if this battle even does come to fruition or if it does get changed somehow. So, But even if a Sovereign gets blown up, unless we see a registry on the Nacelle, there's like six of them, so you won't know until you see it. Yeah. So we'll be, we'll be, we'll be, and boy, if they do accidentally destroy a ship with the wrong textures, which you can see is the E, it's like you, you guys just killed the E, guys, you, <laughs> you, you just, you just, you just killed the E, and then uh, Tom Tales is like, but I killed the E four years from now, and they have to like have a a, a showrunner fight off. We can't both kill the E. Anyway, now yes, you mentioned the Sovereign. Now if we it, go to the next shot, you can see USS Sovereign NCC seven three eight one one. Keep that in mind, okay? Now, there's lots of shots of the Sovereign throughout the episode, and they're all motion blurried, but here is a correct registry. Yeah, and this is when it warps in at the end. Specifically. One of the, one of the ones coming in to save the day, and then gets immediately uh, evil-fied. It is a hero moment of, here is the Sovereign, huzzah, oh no, it got shot. Now, the next shot is every other shot before that moment of a Sovereign, which registries can be seen. And so this is all before it warps in. And in fact, one of them is the same shot before it warps in. So there is, for one shot, two sovereigns at the same time. Now, while they aren't all readable, necessarily, I think you might be able to dissect at least one or two letters on each one or numbers and notice that they're all the same. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's hard to read, honestly, with how fast it is. But as you say, when you go frame by frame, it's kind of more noticeable, obviously, because we got these screen caps. Yeah, So I, I've um, hand-picked. But yeah, so it is canon, guys. There were seven, potentially seven USS Sovereigns in the battle. That's, that's, the, that's yeah, the, replica, uh, the replicator uh, ship technology. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it could just be the same Sovereign that happens to move throughout the battle. It was very nimble. But certainly, yeah, it it's be. the one... As the defiant is in the red holographic, you know, we target you to attack you. So at least the construct knew the sovereign was already there before the sovereign walked in because it affected the pre sovereign to fire. So that's the caveat, guys, of yes, there is the E, but also there's only sovereigns. So take from that what you will. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to say whether they intended for the E it, and the Sovereign to be there necessarily. No, it's pretty, just... pretty easy to say it wasn't. It's pretty, pretty easy to say. Well, I'm trying to... No, it's fine. It's, it's funny. Because, of course, any E model you would get from any team member would be default the Enterprise E. So yeah. you're already going to have those things established on texture palette, so just don't change them unless you're going to a close within a cell. But it's still fun, and either way, it's sort of back. Because canon is canon, as annoying as that is. So... Yeah. So we want to hear from you guys in the comments section. What do you think about this? Uh, do you think that this is where the E gets destroyed? Hence, we have the F in card season three. Or is it just an uh, error on their part? Let us know in the comments section. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss any lives or edited content that we do. Because we do a lot of it, and we love Trek. Yeah, and when the ships, we do an insane amount, because that is what we're here for. That's been our bread and butter love of the franchise for a long time. So support us. In that, to see more via Patreon, which is monthly, or join the channel, also monthly, is a join button on the YouTube channel. 
Makes sense. Or Patreon. No, it's a PayPal, as I meant. One time donation at dreadyards.hotmail.com. Or super thanks on any video. It's like a PayPal, but on YouTube. There's a button it's called super thanks and super chat on any lives. Thank you in advance. And all of it helps a lot. So until next time, he is Commander Cocky. He's Captain Foley. Bye, guys. <laughs>